So, by no means is there ever any weather that you have to fly in. So pick your days. GoPro audio adapter. Thank you, Patreons. I hope this continuing series is worth a dollar a month. I hope the audio improvements are worth a dollar a month. The cold air behind this cold front makes it very, very flyable. It's stable. The only problem is it's cold. It really is a cold front. We don't just get a whole lot of these. So if I had to take a guess about how the average paramotor pilot determines if the weather's safe to fly or not, I'd wager that he probably uses this formula right here. Am I right? Well, I see the question on social media all the time. What weather app do you use? The far better question would be, what weather criteria do you use? to determine if it's safe to fly. So getting into the specifics of lifted indices and energy in the atmosphere, that's that's a skill that takes years and years to develop. I kind of want to put out something that's uh, quick, down and dirty for a lot of people to be able to look at and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think I can figure that out, even on my own. So you left the schoolhouse where every single time that you went out to fly your instructor would go up first and test the air for you. Well now you're back at home and you say, well gee, I gotta make this decision all on my own and I don't have a flight test dummy. What criteria am I going to use to determine if it's safe? Anytime that temperature and dew point are close to each other, I really start thinking about not getting out there and flying. I'm not as comfortable as going through and above clouds as some of the folks that post stuff on the internet because I know how easy it is to get stuck over an overcast that you thought was going to burn off, but it doesn't. Maybe on the other hand, you're lucky enough to always fly with a big group of people and even if you drag your feet and you're the second one in the air, you at least get to observe somebody else take off and climb out and see how much they're getting tossed around, even if they don't land and give you a report on the weather. But that's just not the reality for a lot of us. We're out there flying alone. We're looking at leaves moving on trees and information we can find online. So if that's you, let's walk through how I've determined what weather is safe and what weather I want to avoid. A pretty simple step through process of, of the websites that I visit and my, my pre-flight data feed, if you will. that rules out flying for me weather wise is winds aloft above about 30 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour at 3,000 feet above takeoff elevation. That just spells too much chance for mechanical turbulence to get developed down near the ground. Any chance that you can take to eliminate or minimize your exposure to shear, you're going to be safer in one of these things. You're going to be safer. It's going to be a more comfortable ride. It's going to be smoother. So where do you get all this information? Well, let's look at a couple of websites. Almost all of my pre-flight internet searches 
start right here with this page. This is a national composite radar. It's made up of a bunch of different radars and it uses standard radar colors. So green is light rain, yellow is moderate rain, red is heavier intense rain, and then blue unfortunately is snow and ice and cold. I think they use a couple other ones. There's a pink for freezing rain over here on the, the Oregon Idaho border there's a little freezing rain there. Sometimes they'll use uh, uh, white for ice and snow conditions. But the beauty of this is you can animate it by clicking play animation. And here you can see that when you click the play animation you can actually see the rotation of this low pressure system. It looks to me like the center of the low is somewhere in eastern Ohio or maybe western Pennsylvania. You can also click on a specific area and it takes you into a much closer view and then you can animate that as well and you can see the snow moving across the state of Ohio. So if we go back to the big view and I come up here to the national map drop down I can go to the surface analysis and it will show me the position of the fronts and the low pressures and the high pressures. So here it is overlaid. Those lows I were talking about are right here these highs are right here which are going to have clockwise flow around them and that's what's causing this big push of cold air down into the southeast which makes it just a little too chilly to go out and fly the reason that I like the IntelliCast.com format is because it's so comprehensive all of these individual drop-down menus from the top give you access to literally hundreds of different weather feeds from satellites to precipitation to forecasts. Just make sure that the data that you're looking at is current and that you understand the difference between current data and forecast data. One of the things that I typically like to look at in the summertime is the visible satellite or water vapor feeds. They're only going to work in the daylight hours and there's a little bit of a lag between when the photos are taken and when the water visibility, or I should say the water becomes visible. But it's a good tool to see that it's going to be pretty dry here in the southeast and there might be some moisture down in south Florida. The next stop that I typically make when I'm considering if I'm going to go fly my paraglider is this aviationweather.gov page. It's one of the NOAA weather feeds and it's basically the aviation page that's approved by the US government. The key to navigating this thing is down here at the footer. I like to click on the METARs which are the actual airport observations taken every hour and I double click on that and I scroll down to the bottom and I use the manual feature. Since I'm in the southeast today I'll type in Kilo Charlie Alpha Echo which is the Columbia Airport, Kilo Alpha India Kilo which is Aiken South Carolina, Kilo Charlie Lima Tango for the Charlotte Airport and for good measure I'll throw in Kilo Charlie Hotel Sierra for the Charleston Airport and I click this little include the TAF. TAF is terminal area forecast and I get the data. When it comes back it's a raw feed and here we can see the 27th which is the date the 14, 1500 hour Zulu 1456 Zulu observation time. The winds were west at 6 knots 10 mile visibility, scattered clouds, only 4 degrees Celsius and the uh, altimeter was 29 or 89. Now the forecast for later on is included in here so at 1700 which is about noon time the winds will be west at 12 gusting to 20. Similarly you can compare other local weather not all airports forecast so it's going to be your bigger terminal area airports that actually put out a forecast. A smaller airport like this will 
say, you know, no terminal forecast found for Aiken. But it, if you're a data guy, this is going to give you the, the, the best idea of what the winds are going to be, what the cloud cover is going to be, and what the temperature is for your intended time of flying. So remember what we talked about was criteria. So one of the key things that I look for or that disqualifies a day for flying for me is the difference between the ground winds and the winds aloft. The winds aloft are found down here under forecast. And yes, you can look at this and use the slider bar and gives you a general idea, but I like the specific data. I like to come down here to the southeast and click on it, and this chart pops up. And you can see here, the winds at 3,000 feet in the Columbia area are only 290 at 12. So that's only a four knot differential from our ground winds, which were 260 at six or seven or eight. Early in the morning like this, it might be a good time to go fly, but I'd certainly want to be on the ground before those forecasted high gusty winds come later on this afternoon. If there's something you don't like, you take off, turn right back around and land. Don't, don't hang around up there and make, make the idea that it's going to get better. Now, I will say this. There have been times where small fronts that weren't forecast blow through. And when that happens, you might be better off hanging out up high and delaying your landing 15 or 20 minutes, particularly if there's a significant wind shift. Those wind shifts are the, the thing that will get you. It's right in the vicinity of frontal passage where the weather tends to have the most changes to it. And if you happen to be out flying and there's a shifting wind situation that wasn't forecast, something that wasn't on the map. Maybe it's 35 or 40 miles away, the bottom fell out of a thunderstorm and cold air comes racing across the ground. You might find it a better idea to just stay up higher, let the wind blow through because local weather events typically don't last that long in transition. So things like massive frontal systems with a lot of thunderstorms, that's a different story, but for one thing to affect the weather in a state of change, for a significantly long period of time is unusual. So lastly, any online pre-flight planning session should require a stop at the FAA's TFR map. TFR stands for Temporary Flight Restrictions. These are the ones that will get you arrested and thrown in jail if you don't observe them. It's usually the first thing that comes back and you'll find the graphical map and there's a TFR list tab, or you can zoom in on your particular state or your area of intended flight. I like the list because I kind of like to see what's out there. You'll find everything here from VIP movement, usually meaning the President of the United States, to electromagnetic interference, rocket launches, natural disasters, and particularly recently, unfortunately, firefighting activity. You're going to need to stay out of those areas, but the specifics of each one of these can be found by clicking on them. So I thought this one was pretty interesting. The uh, particular Alaska near this Gulkana VOR, which is out in the middle of nowhere here, if you click on Notum Text, electromagnetic radiation from scientific research. Pretty interesting stuff. So the specific text is there, the dates and the valid times are all there, and you can find your way around the TFR map. You can look at lots of these different uh, events and planned events, everything from security to hazards, lots and lots and lots of them. So make sure that you take a look at that and stay out of trouble. And if you're out flying and all of a sudden the wind picks up to 20 or 30 miles an hour and starts changing direction and gusting, yeah, you might come in and land 
if you can get on the ground safety but if there's any question you might be better off if you got 45 or 50 minutes worth of gas on board to just loiter in the vicinity of the airport a little bit higher your LZ a little bit higher and see if things blow through and improve of course if you took off when they're significantly increasing for a period of time you should have seen that in your forecasted weather well, it's my opinion that there really is no such thing as a comprehensive one-stop weather video. Weather is an extremely complex topic. It'll take you a lifetime to figure out some of this stuff. But start to build a database of your own weather experiences. Whether you write them down or not, it's up to you. But try to specifically remember what were the weather conditions, what was the wind speed in the forecast and in the actual weather that was observed that I was comfortable with and try to find those points where you don't want to go flying in that again and where's the difference? How, how close can you get to that edge? And I'm not saying go out there in bad weather, but I will tell you this much. Over the course of my flying career, a lot of my best memories of aviation, hands down, were made in marginal weather. I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and fly in weather that's beyond their capabilities, but some of my greatest memories have to do with cloud cover that's coming over the horizon or starting to be fog or fog burning off. Those are some really special moments. So get out there and enjoy and uh, be careful and fly safe. We'll continue to talk about weather in future videos. And like always, uh, thanks to the Patreon supporters for your continued support of this channel. And if you... Uh, are so inclined to find your way to my Patreon page. I'll put links to all of the web pages that we visited and my Patreon page below. And please click like and subscribe. Fly safe.